Abarasha. Can we begin to declare that God is our firm foundation? On his rock we stand. No power of death. Nothing can take us away from his hand. Can we make this a confession? Lord, we stand on your strength. We stand on the solid rock of Christ. Our strength is anchored on you. Our children anchored on you. Our finance anchored on you. Our health anchored on you. And I'm a coast. We will stand. We will not be shaking. We will stand. Nothing will take us. Nothing will consume us. Nothing will consume our finance. In the name of Jesus. Your knees. And I'm a coast. Christ, the solid rock, we will stand forever and ever, forever and ever. The solid rock on which we stand forever and ever, we will not be put to shame. He said, that put the trust in the Lord, we will not be put to shame. We stand on the solid rock of Christ, no power of death, nothing can go wrong. And our back house, let the breath out, because our lives are hidden in Christ Jesus. And our back house, the broken rock house, in our bayan. Oh, Father, we thank you. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for being the strength of our lives. Thank you for being the anchor that holds us so close. We are nothing without you. You are the solid rock on which we are firmly rooted. Without you, we are nothing. Thank you for holding us together. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. We thank you because nothing, no power from anywhere can touch us. Because our life is hidden in Christ Jesus. Thank you because your eyes are always on the righteous. Thank you because you pay attention to us. Bible says our walls are constantly before you. Thank you because we will not be put to shame. Because we put our trust in you. Thank you because we will not be put to shame. Because we put our trust in you. Thank you because our families will not be put to shame. Because we put our trust in you. Our businesses, our careers, our relationships. They will not be put to shame. Because we trust in you. Thank you because no man put their trust in you and they were put to shame. David said, since I was born, now I'm old. He says he has never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed back for bread. Thank you because we can never be forsaken. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we turn our Bibles very quickly to the book of Luke 21 verse 13. Scripture says, KJV, it says, and he shall turn to you for a testimony. He shall turn to you for a testimony. You know, this month is our month of due season. It was said to us that this is our month of rejoicing and celebration. You're going to declare with your mouth that it will turn to me for a testimony. In the name of Jesus, can you make that your prayer this morning? My finance, it shall turn to me as a testimony. My plans, it will become my testimony. In this ember month, for the rest of the quarter, it will turn to me for a testimony. That project, it will turn to me for a testimony. That delay, it will turn to me for a testimony. It will turn to me for a testimony in the name of Jesus. It will turn to me. The mountains and the valleys, the mountains are breaking forth. The mountains are giving way. The mountains are giving way because it is my turn to testify. It is my season to testify. It will turn to me for a testimony. The valleys are being filled. The relationships are working. The projects are working. The plans are coming to pass. The plans have been established because it's turning to me for a testimony. Oh, let 
Damanasta. Oh, Father, we thank you. Ilana Makosta. Thank you because even in this house, there is a turning around. There is a stirring. There is a turning around. There is an activation in the spirit. There is angelic turnings. Angels ministering, turning. Opening doors. Opening doors. Because it is our time for our testimony. Father, the lady that came before, she said that it was a time for testimony. So she keyed into the testimony. Father, we're keying into that testimony. And we declare that wherever there is a bot, wherever there is a stagnation, wherever there is an unhealthy growth, I declare that today is going to turn to every one of us as a testimony. In the name of Jesus. Oh, we give you praise and glory. Thank you because, Lord, you watch over your word to perform it. Thank you because you will bring this to pass. From this service today, many will come and testify. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that you grant us understanding. Thank you because there will be transformation in the house this morning. We thank you because you will breathe over your word, O oh God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can we acknowledge and celebrate Jesus in the house? Hallelujah. Before you have your seats, can you find three neighbors and greet them? Shake them, give them a big hug. Ask them, how are you? We want to welcome all our friends and family watching us from everywhere in the world. Welcome. Collect a number if you can. If you can't, have your seat. Now my sister there is trying to greet the guys beside her, but they are not answering now. My sister, don't mind them. <laughs> greet, greet him, greet him. My brother in glasses, greet her. She was trying to greet you. Hallelujah. This is family. Amen. So vulnerability is what is allowed. Tap your neighbor. Another opportunity to greet. Say neighbor. Vulnerability is allowed in the house of the Lord. Amen. Wow. You know, this month for us in church is our relationship month. And for the singles, I'm always very excited because there's plenty of testimonies usually after the October series. Aha, uh -huh. you people did not catch it. Have you heard this introduction? I'm saying you introduced you. Don't you know he has purpose? <laughs> because there is usually testimonies. You hear, oh, I'm getting engaged. Uh -uh, wow. Is that relationship series? Oh, that will be someone's testimony in the name of Jesus. And you know, um, Pastor Balaji has been preaching powerfully, practically, you know, on the purpose of marriage. And today we want to talk very quickly about communication in marriage. And the programs team also told me to hurry up with my preaching because they need time for connections for the singles. <laughs> so we will try, I will try my best. But that timer is ungodly, Pastor Jay. <laughs> All right. So, um, and you know why this series is very important? Because a lot of us, myself included, we enter marriage very unprepared. Unprepared like raw food. And I remember that when I was getting married, I've been married for 13 years, praise God. I, um, I, had, I had done counseling in my parents' church, a redeemed church for six weeks. And I'd done counseling here in Harvesters for six weeks. So I would have thought I was prepared. And then to then top it up, I'd been dating for eight years. So you think that I would be prepared, I'd be, nah. The tornado that hit me in the marriage. Ah, uh, I said, is this the marriage? You know, I'm not telling them. I remember calling Pastor Mo. I called, I said, but he didn't tell me that it was like this. You never told me. I told her she lied to me. Don't get me wrong, my husband is fantastic. You know, but I say that because there is a preparation that people need to prepare to get married. And if we see every Saturday, especially now we're in this Ember month, everybody is getting married. Almost as though the goal is to get married. But then the people getting married and the people staying married is totally different. So people are getting married in their hundreds, but the ones that are staying married statistically is like five out of 10, which is 50%. So I started to wonder that, is it that we enter this marriage just to, for the picture? I got married and then done it and then we're out of the marriage. And so for me, whenever it's an October series, 
I pay attention. I get a book, big book so that I'm able to write and get blessed and so that I can add some spice. Somebody say spice to my marriage. Because even as we get older, we need to add. If garlic does not work, we turn to Minda. We turn to turmeric. Whatever spice that we need to do to make sure that the marriage is getting spicer, we do it. So in October series, we don't joke with it. Somebody say we don't joke with it. And so today, we want to talk about communication in marriage. You know, I said earlier on that I've been married for 13 years. But the truth is, in the first two, three years of the marriage, communication was a major issue in my marriage. As a matter of fact, in year two, because of this bad communication, I was ready to pack my things and leave. But because I'm on this thing, I'm not going to tell you people how I packed the bag. But whether it was my mind or physically, there was a packing of bag because of bad communication. And so when I, when I got this topic today, I said, ah, they have caught me because I had to sit and unlearn communication and learn communication the God way. And I'm hoping that today I can, you know, pass across one of the things that I learned from the Bible about communication. So what is communication? The goal of communication, firstly, is that we are heard, right? Is that we are considered, number two. Number three is that what we are understood. If I'm not heard, then why am I talking to you? If I'm not considered, then why bother? And then lastly, if I'm not understood, then there is no need. And so communication is that someone needs to remove their own shoes. You know their shoes. Shoes are like their opinions, their judgments, their conclusions. They need to remove their shoe and enter into the shoe of another person, your partner, to see and feel how the person sees and feels. And so when you're able to do that, you're able to understand why and what, how, is this how this means to you? Is this how this makes you feel? If that is not done, then communication will break down. And, you know, I like to tell my husband that we were verbally assassinating ourselves in marriage because we were just shooting, hey, don't you know it's your responsibility to do this? Don't you know you're expected? Don't you? We were just killing ourselves, left, right, and center, but God saved us. Somebody say amen. amen. So why is communication important? Can we turn our Bibles to the book of Amos 3, verse 3? Communication is the lifeline that makes everything in our relationship work. You know, it's like the, it's like the blood in the body. Amos 3, verse 3 says, Can three, can two work together? except the what they be agreed. That means that the working together of the two of us is based on what? Our agreement. Yes or yes? And the, our agreement is based on what? Our understanding of each other. And there is no way that I can understand you if there is no what? Effective communication. And so if we really want some working together of intimacy or working together of friendship or working together of connection or whatever it is that we want to work together in our marriage, then we need to know that there has to be some agreement and for agreement to happen, there needs to be effective communication. And so the way communication got to me, you know, I told you that this issue was a big issue for me, <clears throat> is that I started to see it as like the blood in our body. And so what carries food and nutrients and oxygen to every part of your body is what? The blood. And so if I needed blood, you know, to function properly, then my marriage needed me to be, to talk better, to listen better for you to function. And so I started to do what? Pay attention to communication. Because if there is a working together, if there is anybody chasing 2,000, or if there is a chasing of, in the thousands, there has to be working together and there has to be agreement. So I realized that communication, number one, is the lifeline that makes any relationship work. Number two, when there is no communication, there is mar marital tension. You know tension? <clears throat> you know tension? Uh -huh. Tension where for no reason, we're just irritated at each other. You know, the atmosphere is tense. Your children are fighting. They don't even know why, why they are fighting. Why? Because everybody is seeking their own. There is no understanding. There is no proper conversation or agreement. And so, 
you then enter marriage or you enter your home and you notice that everything is, is tough. The atmosphere is breathing and it's not the breathing of the Holy Ghost. Marital tension. And nothing grows well in tension place. And so you wonder that, oh, I've been married for such a long time. We're not achieving anything. The reason why you're not achieving anything is because there is tension in the marriage. Only weed can grow where there is tension. Hallelujah. And so the second reason why communication is very important is because if we do communicate intentionally and effectively, the environment becomes very toxic for yourself and for your spouse. Hallelujah. The third reason why communication is very important, James 3 verse 16. Are we there? KJV. The Bible says, for where envy and strife is, there is what? There is confusion and every evil work. When I saw this scripture, I'm like, are you for real? Because for there to be strife, that means that there is fight. And once we are fighting, there is disagreement. And the disagreement is brought about by what? By not understanding each other. And so once there is misunderstanding and zero communication, there is proper strife. And then the Bible says that that strife, that fight, that fight that we are seeking our own instead of pursuing peace, what that strife leads to is confusion. And when confusion is fully manifested, it brings birth to evil work. And you're seeing the workings of the, of, of the enemy in your home and you're wondering how. How? Because you have opened the door to the devil. Because of what we are seeking, who is right and who is wrong. But then, when I saw that, really and truly, what I really want is peace in my home, not who is right and who is wrong. I decided to sit with understanding. The Bible says that with understanding is what is a house built. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we sit with understanding. Because when, when, we, when we don't find, when there is fight... The devil is able to attack our minds. And so you see in marriages now, young people, there's blood pressure issue everywhere. And you're wondering how. It's because, you know, the enemy has entered. You're seeing with women, fiber, PCOS. How? It's because the enemy has entered. Why? Because we opened the door with strife and confusion. So we left the enemy. We were fighting ourselves. And the enemy had a few days in our home doing that which he knows best, destroying and attacking us but we know better now so we will no longer fight ourselves because there once there is confusion the bible says that there will be every evil work and and that's not in our marriage in the name of jesus so very quickly what are the ways that we can communicate with the word of god through with the word of god or what are the ways that we see that we can communicate, you know, according to what the word of God says. And, you know, a lot of time we see these fights and we're wondering, Lord, when will the fight in my marriage, when will the fight in my relationship end? But the Bible says that life and death is what is in the power of our tongue. That means that the power to bring life into your marriage is, resides in you. And so we can say, oh, the Ogunsoya's family, oh, they are doing well. Oh, when I go to their house, babe, everything is okay in their house. And you're looking at their own garden and it looks as if their marriage is fine. But then you have the power to also fix your own marriage with the power of your words. I want us to look at that scripture. It's in Proverbs 18 verse 21. It says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it, it says because you love it, you shall eat the fruit of it. Because you love it, because you pay attention to the words that you speak, you will eat the fruit of your relationship. But then if you ignore it totally, and you say, you know what, I'm just going to communicate, I'm just going to get it off my chest, I'm just going to say it as it is, and then you will get it as it is. And you know, the unfortunate thing for me was that I came from a marriage where my parents, I never seen my parents fight. I'm not joking. You know, I didn't, I know till today, I don't know how they were able to manage it that it didn't come to the children when they fought. The only thing I was able to remember, because when I entered my marriage and I was seeing basketballs, the only thing I could remember was that maybe my mom would say, go and ask your dad if he's ready to eat. And I'll be saying, ah, 
But it's right there beside you. That's the only clue that I had that my parents were fighting. And so I entered it and I'm like, ah, where are my bags? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But I realized, I learned from the word that the power of life and death resides in my tongue. I can dictate the atmosphere in my marriage. I can dictate the things that happen in my marriage. By what? By engaging the force of words. Somebody say amen. amen. All right, so I want us to look very quickly to Col Colossians 4 verse 6. This is us talking about ways to care, ways to communicate from the Bible. I need you to write. Because it took me plenty of research to come up with this, you know, I mean, when I say research, I mean with experience, with years. You know, the days of, oh, Lord, talk to him, talk to him, see how he's behaving. You know, all of that. You know, but God has been faithful. <laughs> Must not catch me this message. I mean, it's true. <laughs> All right, so very quickly, Colossians 4, verse 6. Scripture says, Let your speech at all times be what? Be gracious. Amplified version, please. Let your speech at all times be gracious. He said, Let your speech be pleasant. He said, let it be seasoned with what? With salt. Somebody says seasoned with salt. So that you will know how to answer each one. Hmm. You know, and if you, if you see the beginning of that verse, it says let. Let means that allow it. That means that whether he's behaving well or she's not behaving well, allow your words to be seasoned with salt. And then it says that we, we need to be more intentional about it, that you make a decision that this is my words with my partner, with my boss, or with my friends. He must be seasoned with what he said. Let your speech at all times be gracious. He said, let it be pleasant. And so when you speak, let us feel the flavor in your tone. Let us feel the respect in your body language. Ah, I know how to give body language. <laughs> I'll be like, eh, eh. Uh, by the time the Lord was done with me, I was humble in my spirit. Not just in my mind, but in my spirit. Hallelujah. So firstly is that you need to, we need to learn to communicate with care. Let the love and the commitment that you claim to have, let it show in your communication. It's not that when the person does wrong, you now roll up you know, the wrongness and say, yes, I need to put it to you. You know, I was saying to one of my friends earlier on that one time, we just maybe like two or three years in marriage, my husband had said to me that he wanted to buy a property off plan. And I said, well, I didn't think he should buy it. I didn't think it was a good idea, all of that. Anyway, he went ahead to buy it. He didn't just buy one, he now bought three. Six months down the line, he now came. Babe, sure you know that property. I can't find the person again. Uh, by the time I was done with my words, it took me two years to get him to be vulnerable again with me. Because I took him and I finished him. I asked, I, I, but I told you, you won't listen. What kind of man does not listen? I finished him with the word. But then the Bible says, allow. Allow your words. Whether it's good, whether it's misbehaving or not behaving well, Allow your words to be seasoned with grace. He says that for us women, allow respect. Because what men understand by care is that your words are showing respect. Showing that you trust his judgment. I trust you. We communicate. I trust you. I believe in you. I trust your judgment. You can lead us well. I didn't know those ones. By the time I knew it, <laughs> I started to, ah, oh, is that... So is that what happened? Oh, wow. So where, where's, not, where's the guy now? You know, and then I started to communicate because there is always a goal for communication, right? There is a reason why you're communicating. You want to achieve something, right? But then when we begin to verbally assassinate each other, plus the goal, plus you, plus the person, you can't find anybody. And that's what happened to me. For two years, I didn't get him to be vulnerable with me. Communicate with care. Let your body language, let it show respect. 
Let your words be pleasant. He said, let your speech be full with, ple with pleasantness. He said, let your countenance, let it show pleasantry. When it shows up, when he or she shows up, you know, let them know that you are there, you are listening in. When they are speaking to you, let them know that you are involved. Let your response show that you are on the journey of that communication with them. And because once we are not able to do that, maybe the person has told you, oh, this is everything that happened in my day. And then you're just looking, mm-hmm, you know. And we women, we like for our men to join in the conversation with us. If you have a guy beside you, tell him, join in the conversation with us. They are not answering us. Hallelujah. Join in the conversation with us. Communicate with patience. Communicate with us with patience. Let's communicate with each other. Be patiently, commi commi you know, converse. Let me speak. Be, be, enter my shoes to listen and feel how I feel. So that you are able to respond properly. But when you, put, when you already have an answer as I'm about to speak, that's it. There is no understanding. And once there is no understanding, there is no agreement. When there is no agreement, there is no working together. And so we become cohabitants. We are habitating together. Hallelujah. Secondly, communicate with praise. Hallelujah. I love this. You know, because the truth is, each and every one of us, we have our strength and our weakness. True or false? I have the things that I'm good at. Can you pay attention to the things that your spouse is good at and stay on that thing until he grows? Because every time you focus on their negative, it's that negativity that you keep having. And so I could complain about his phone until I started saying that, you know what, these things that you are searching on the phone, be sending it to me, let's be watching it together. And then it became a thing for both of us. Hallelujah. Because every one of us, we need that acknowledgement. We need you to acknowledge the little effort that it is that you're giving. And so every time you communicate with praise, and you know, once you praise, people become vulnerable. Their hearts are open to receive the information that you're bringing. And everybody grows, they rise to the words of your expectation. And so the day you start to say that, you know what, you're a good man. I say, ah, really? I say, yeah, you're a good man. And so by the time he starts, ah, she's always saying I'm a good man. Maybe I need to pay attention, you know, and really work on myself. Because everybody rises to the place of their expectation. But once you keep damaging, 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 they will even become worse. Hallelujah. You know, so recently, my husband, you know, is a cricketer. He organizes tournament for, you know, the country. So he was organi he's organizing one at the moment. So I sent him a message randomly. So, you know, I call him my joy. Hallelujah. I know. Because I say communicate with praise. Who baby, help. Everybody, baby, baby. You cannot be generalizing your husband. I say, Femi, my joy. I say, my joy. I say, oh, you know, I'm so proud of you. I like the way you put your weight behind everything that you do. Ah. So, and then he said, oh, wow, well, thank you. So I went to the cricket pitch over the weekend. And all of a sudden, everybody who came to meet me, oh, Balaji, thank you so much for the support you're giving for me. Ah. President came, thank you for the support. <laughs> Which one's all this? Thank you, thank you. So by the time I got to the gentleman, I said, my joy, why is everybody thanking me? He said, ah, I showed them the message. I said, really? Oh my days. Because I realized that all of a sudden the guy is shaking body without me asking. I now know that the praise was working. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the thing with praise is that you need to praise publicly. Men love it because of their ego. You need to praise privately. Women love it because of validation. Hallelujah. And, you know, there's one level of praise when you give. The other level of praise is that, you know, when they are praising, you receive the praise. Don't let me say, oh, you look good, sir, before encore. You killed it. But receive it with humility and gratitude. Hallelujah. And then you thank him for every little thing. Thank you that you listened to me. That meant a lot to me. I, I, that's, I really, listening to you means a lot to you. I'll be listening to you. You know, you find little things and you schedule it. I have an alarm. Fri Friday evening is our date night. My friends know. Once it's Friday evening, like, you can't find me. Why? Because it's my appreciation time with my husband. So I schedule the praise. Because we, for marriage to work, it needs to be intentional. 
And Pastor Pete told us last week, he said, only men get married. You need to mature. That means you drop the things that you used to do and you come up to maturity according to the word of God and you make this marriage work so that we can tell the devil that my marriage is off limits. Amen. And so you communicate with praise. You know, and that's why you need to find a name, a very good, a name that will make their head stand. You not call baby, baby everywhere, everywhere, baby. You find a name. Say the one that satisfies me. You look at their body, say your body was constructed for me. By the time the guy is just going, don't be thinking, ah, I need to come home to Balaji. Hallelujah. So you, thirdly, you communicate the truth with love. Ephesians 4 verse 15 says, communicating, speaking the truth with love. And you know, firstly is that God is big about the truth before we even enter a relationship. One of the things that God says is that he hates people that lie. He says, I hate lying tongue. And so firstly is that we need to speak the truth. We need to decide that my marriage is truth zone. And so spouses, we need to create opportunities for our husbands to speak the truth or our girlfriends or boyfriends to speak the truth. There is a way that you can ask me about my salary. You ask me, ask me, ask me. I'll start lying. Yes or yes? And so you allow them, give them opportunities to say the truth. And be, when, as they are telling you the truth, don't blow it out of proportion. Allow them to say the truth. But most importantly, speak the truth in love. Butter the truth. Butter it. You know, marinate it with tenderness. And you know, the story that comes to my mind is the story about Jesus. When he met the lady at the well, he didn't say, are ah, you adulteress? Mm -mm. He said to her, he said, oh, my dear. You know, can you give me water to drink? And she said, ah, you this Jew, why are you talking to me, Sam? She was even dishing my Jesus. You know, but Jesus kept going. He says, oh, if you know who I am, you will give me water to drink. He was bringing the truth to her, but he was bringing it with, gent with gentility and kindness. Until he said, oh, and he knew, he said, oh, do you, where is your husband? Jesus knew where he was going to. And so a lot of time, we want to say, babe, this is what you've done wrong. You know, I need to tell you the truth. You need to hear the truth, and the truth needs to make you free. Nobody's going to listen to that. Because what? Your words are supposed to build them up, not tear them down. And so once your words are building, they are open and more vulnerable to listen to what it is that you are saying. And so I developed a method called sandwich approach. Have you guys heard about it? Uh -huh. Sandwich approach is that you do praise. You now shook it with, the <laughs> with what it is that you want to say. And then you now close it back. So I give you an example. You want to say, I mean... So maybe your partner or someone that you're in a relationship with is stingy. Mm -hmm. The women will like this one. And so what you really, the goal of the communication is that you want him to give you money, right? Right? Uh-huh. So what do you do? Oh, babe, you know, I like the way you're very diligent with work. I like the way that you, you know, you wake up very early, you, you're driving, all of that. You massage it. You know, and then you said to him that, oh, babe, you know, I'll be very happy. I will, you know, every time you give me money, I'm so happy about it. You know, there's something that makes me, it gives me joy when you're able to share from your sweat with me. Ah, uh -huh. hey. He said, really? He said, yeah, because I imagine how you sweating, you're doing all of that. You know, and every time, you know, it's just, it, it's bigger than, it's not, it's not a lot of money. Even, I mean, my salary is not even, but the fact that it's coming from you. It just gives me joy. I mean, when I'm spending it, I'm, I'm like this. Because I'm spending my husband's sweat. Ah. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. You speak the truth with love. Hallelujah. Because the goal of the communication must remain the goal of the communication. Once you start to attack persons, you know, then the person it becomes the thing. I'm stingy, I'll be, okay, I'm living with my stinginess. Finish, no money, nothing. Because marriage takes work. It takes intentionality. It takes, more importantly, proactiveness. Especially if you're a busy woman or a busy man. You need to be very proactive in, the, in your approach to your marriage. The things that you need to do, you will settle it early so that we can all be great. Somebody say amen. amen. 
So we communicate. Lastly, we communicate with faith. We communicate in faith. So I said that we'll communicate. But what's the first one? We communicate with care. Number two, we communicate with praise. Number three, we communicate the truth with love. And then the fourth one, we communicate in faith. Bible says in Proverbs 21 verse 1, it says that the heart of the king is where? He's in the hands of God. Proverbs 21 verse 1, please let me put it up. It says the king's heart what, is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turneth it with so ever he wills. That means that only God has the capacity to change a man. So men, you can shout from now to tomorrow. It doesn't mean that the women will change. Woman, you can nag from now to tomorrow. It doesn't mean that the man will change. Why? Because only God can change a man. So what do we do? We take our words, patiently say it. And leave it and believe that God will carry our words and bring it to pass. We communicate what in faith, trusting that God will enforce, enforce that we are saying to our spouses. Because if you shout, you know, I don't know why men shout. I really don't understand it. Maybe they feel like they can't engage in the plenty world, so they turn to shout. Even women do shout. But they shout because you, we, you need to be heard. I can listen to the shout does not mean I'm hearing the shout. So sometimes we shout, we try in our own power. But the Bible says that we flesh shall no man prevail. So when we try and manipulate and do all of that, seize this, seize the car, seize this, do all of that, yet there is no change. Because it is God that turns the heart of a man. So what do we do? We communicate in faith. We ask God, look at Esther. Esther wanted to meet her own husband. She had to pray so that God can begin to prepare his heart. So that by the time she got there, he said, do anything, she had not even spoken. He said, I'll give you half of the kingdom. That's what it means when you communicate in faith. You communicate prayerfully. You tell God, God, I'm going, you know, make my words not fall to the ground. And then you show up. That's what, I mean, that is what it means to be a Christian. Because we can't do life like the un unbelievers. This is what it means to be a Christian. Understanding that a threefold cord, God is the threefold cord, cannot be broken. And so you take God and you put it in the communication. Because if there is no God in the communication, the communication will break. So you take God and you say, Lord, I'm going to talk about this. We need to change the children's school. You know, we need to move houses. I need to change my job. We're thinking of relocating. I need to move from dating to engagement. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need him to be more responsible. I need that to, be, to caution our mouths. You know, all of those things, you take it to God. Why? Because it is embedded in our mix. And so without God, that communication will break. So we do what we communicate in faith and trust that God will bring to pass that which you desire. And I know that this is very tough for Christians because really the guy is just right there or the woman is just right there. Why can't I just tell him my mind and give him a piece of my mind? But then what you really want, the goal of your communication will not be achieved. So what is the need to give him the piece of your mind when you can talk to a God that can speak to him? You know, and this is where it comes to us understanding who we are and surrendering ourselves to God and understanding that we are first gods before we are wives and husbands. And so we understand that our words, our actions, the things that we do, they are first. God has to be the first, has to be the priority. And so we go knowing that our communication is by faith, patiently waiting for God to breathe over the words, patiently waiting that the seed of the words that I have sown we germinate and, you know, there will be harvest. Somebody say amen. amen. We communicate in faith. We don't manipulate. Women, men, no need to manipulate. You can have a tension-free marriage. You can have a fight-free relationship. You can have a beautiful relationship. The, the, the instructions are there in the Bible. It says if two shall agree, it says there will be a working together of your finances. Hallelujah. It says that you should lace your words. Lace it, lace it with pleasantness. You know, lace it with grace. This is what the Bible says concerning communication. And so we can't cherry pick. We pick the Holy Ghost. We leave uh, communication. We can't pick 
prayer and leave that one. No, this is the principle, the word of God. It says, listen. It says, allow it. Let the word, let the, your words, let it be seasoned with grace. Let it be seasoned with salt. It's so, that, so that you can have a good answer for everyone that asks you. Somebody say amen. amen. And so we communicate for a purpose. We don't communicate because we just want to talk. That's carelessness. Carelessness to just talk. The Bible says life and death is in your mouth. So you can kill your marriage. And then they will ask you, how did it happen? You say, I don't even know. You don't know. But every day when God is saying, you know, let it with grace. Be a bit tender. You know, speak the truth in love. You're not paying attention. But your words can kill, can build your marriage. It can make your marriage, your relationship, everything that it is that you want. Because we communicate with a goal to dominate. Yeah, that's what, you know, that's what our marriage is for. For oneness. That's why we're communicating. For unity. So that we are heard. So that we are seen. So that we are considered. So that we are valued. So that we are respected. And so the man needs to hear every time, whether he's good, he's acting well or he's not acting well, if he's respected. A man needs to hear if he's honored, if he's valued. Whether he's, he's, he's in, the, in his worst days, he needs to know that you trust him and you trust his judgment. A woman needs to know that she is your priority, that you place her first. She needs to know that she's well considered in your decision. This is why we communicate. And so beyond every other thing is so that we might come together and so that we might dominate, multiply, and replenish the earth. That is the reason why we are married. So that we can bring godly seeds that will constantly crush the enemy's head. Can we rise to our feet this morning? I want us to pray. Married people, you need to pray. Lord, help us build our homes according to your pattern. If you're married in the house, you want to find your partner and hold them and pray together. Lord, help us build our homes according to, uh, to your pattern. Lord, help us have trouble-free marriages. Cause our marriages to work. Cause communications to work. Cause intimacy to work. In the name of Jesus. In the Cause our marriage to work. Our marriage will not fail. In the name of Jesus. If you are single, you want to pray. Lord. I receive a working relationship in the name of Jesus. I receive wisdom to have a working relationship. I receive the ease to find and be found in the name of Jesus. Ease to find and be found in the name of Jesus. Ease to find and be found. I receive a man that loves God, a man that's supportive and makes me priority in the name of Jesus. I receive a woman that is supportive in the name of Jesus. Married people, are we praying? Our marriage works in the name of Jesus. Lada Bragadosta, no weapon from the guest, our marriage shall prosper in the name of Jesus. Our marriage is working together. Communication is easy for us in the name of Jesus. We receive cancer from the Lord. We come against every negative cancer. We receive the counsel of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Nothing will put us asunder. Nothing will separate us. Nothing will put us asunder in the name of Jesus. Our children works. Our finances is getting better and better. Our marriage getting better and better in the name of Jesus. We are growing from one level of strength, one level of intimacy to another level of intimacy. Our marriage is salted with God is spiced up by the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus singles you are praying I receive God praying partners I call forth my partner order my steps let's 
Lord of Oshida to the right place like Rebecca under my steps to the right place in the name of Jesus oh yes we receive wisdom to build our homes wisdom to build our homes we come against confusion in our homes we receive wisdom to build our homes we come against confusion we declare there is understanding 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 in the name of Jesus we rebuke the devil nothing fails in our marriages in the name of Jesus oh father we thank you thank you because our marriage works thank you because our marriage is working thank you because our marriage is going from one level of glory to another level of glory thank you because communication is working thank you because there is understanding in our midst thank you because there is agreement in our midst thank you because there is clarity in our midst thank you because we have received the wisdom to build our homes Oh Malakabra Nostaha. Father, we pray for every single person here. Nishto Kotubra Katishta Hande Kelesto Branashtaha. Father, we thank you because there will be in this season divine orchestrations by the Spirit. Divine arrangements by the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will open the eyes of men and women to begin to see each other. In the name of Jesus, people will pop in the names of people. There will be divine recommendations. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We receive the wisdom to stay married. We receive the wisdom, the grace, and the strength to stay married. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can we celebrate Jesus in the house? Hallelujah. You may please have your seat in God's presence.